capping it off with us here on ACCN for this matchup between the Demon Deacons and the Tar Heels. And it is senior day, and you see a senior right there for Wake Forest. Aaliyah McWhorter getting the start, getting the ball right off the bat. Well, one of the things Wake Forest needs to do is they need to put pressure on the defense of their opponent. They haven't been able, they haven't done that consistently over the season. This is something they really need to work on. Eight on the shot clock now. Williams sees it, gets it off to Coles in the paint with the right. Deja Kelly, leading scorer for the Tar Heels, averaging 17 points per game, gets it into Gokdang. Donarski coming off a great game. Poole getting the start for the second straight game, and Usby, your starting five for the Tar Heels. Mariah Kelly still listed as day-to-day -day out for North Carolina, so Poole getting the start in her place. Six on the shot clock now for North Carolina. No easy offense coming in these first two possessions. Usby for three. Well, since she was versatile, that is her second three-pointer that she's made. Her coaches have been trying to convince her to shoot more and be more confident in that shot. Well, nothing breeds confidence like seeing your first one go in. There is your starting five for Wake. Mention McWhorter in that lineup along with Scruggs, Coles, Williams, and Harrison. You see here, they've decided Wake Forest to double-team Gokdang so that weak side of Wake Forest is going to have to be awake. Scruggs picking up the foul. Close. Watching that clock in the bottom left. Usby did get it off just in time. I hate that for Wake Forest because they played really good defense. Nice flex cut there. Again, Usby leading the team in assist. They will hit Gokdang off the flex cut. I love when you break out that coaching terminology. Flex cut, looking good. <laughs> Williams. Coach Megan Jebbia telling her team at shoot around today she wanted them to come out of this game like they were shot out of a cannon, really come out aggressively, get off to a good start, not get in a hole to start this game. Of course, Coach Jebbia just in her second season here at Wake Forest, 10th overall as a head coach, spent the previous eight years before coming here at American, which is the winningest coach in program history. And she is trying to get Wake Forest to understand to be competitive, that you've got to be consistent in key areas, most of all on your defense. Kelly banks in the three, a little and smile yeah, on had to her. laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> and now Kelly has also not been shooting the three particularly well. She's just at 27% for the season, so great for her to see that go down. And actually, this season, that was Usby's first made three. And you see her mostly be very effective at the mid-range and driving to the basket, so if she starts hitting threes, Wake Forest needs to watch out. Seven to shoot for Wake Forest. Shot up off the front of the rim for Coles. Kelly, tough guard there for McWhorter, who picks up the foul on the play. Courtney Banghart, her fifth year at North Carolina. Seeing this team through that really difficult stretch, four-game losing streak. You mentioned they got the win on Thursday against Pittsburgh, snapping that four-game losing streak. Coach Banghart with the professorial look with the glasses. <laughs> She actually admitted it does kind of fit her persona. Well, graduate from Dartmouth, the, the biology degree she had, neurobiology, I mean, yeah, she, she could be a professor. Yeah, neuroscience, master's in writing and leadership, yes. Breaks out terms like confounding variable when we're talking to her <laughs> and shoot her at home. That looked like a sure two there for Elise Williams. Doesn't go in though. Must be open in the back door. You see, there's what I meant about being consistent. Coach Jebbia earlier talked today in shooting practice about knowing who you have in defense and transition, so lack of communication there. 10-2 start for the Tar Heels. SP with five. You see how slow Wake Forest is moving the basketball, not getting enough movement from the defense, and they've either had a contested shot or they've turned the ball over. So not quite the start they wanted on offense. 
You see weak side there, Usby, again, I told you, she runs all day, never gets tired, so you've got to get down there and guard her. Foul on the screen on that last play on Alyssa Andrews, the six-foot junior who'd come into the game for Wake Forest. Pulls up from the elbow, good. Just a great job there. That's her bread and butter, is that mid-range jumper. Jump ball called. Is that Sonero in favor of North Carolina? This North Carolina team picked third in the ACC in the preseason. They were ranked in the top 16 coming into the season. Uh, just struggled with a lot of injuries this year, having to play a lot of different rotations and trying to figure out if you see got thing there, get on the board. She's one of the players that I think needs to do more for North Carolina. And I got thing, the transfer from Boston College, started every game for the Eagles last season. Donarski fouling Harrison on the drive to the basket. Well, that's going to be a tough guard for Donarski with Harrison. She is really, really good at getting downhill. And Donarski, as I mentioned, coming off a great game, had 20 points in that win against Pitt on Thursday. 17 of those coming in the second half. Knocked down six threes in the game. Grab transfer from Iowa State. And has her first point in the game. One of the players that Jebbia really does look to, graduate student on this Wake Forest team. And some much needed points. One field goal, a couple of free throws, and this is going to be tough for Wake Forest all night long. North Carolina knows it, taking advantage on the inside. When you see Wake Forest, they don't have much depth in the post. North Carolina, they don't have much depth in the guard position. So we'll see right now, North Carolina is winning that battle. No field goals for the Demon Deacons last three and a half minutes. Renaya Kelly, I mentioned, out with injury, still day to day. Paulina Paris as well for the Tar Heels. Not to mention Kayla McPherson out for the season. Some of the injury troubles that the Tar Heels have dealt with. And here's where Usby is so valuable. She can start and finish the fast break with the ball handling skills. Got stuck though. Good defense being played by Cole is forcing Usby into the pass. Usby ball back in her hands. Need a shot and under five. Kelly glances up at the shot clock. Calls her own number too strong. Course, very deliberate in their offense. The question is when you get down to the end of the shot clock, who can create their own shot? And I do think they need to go into Cole's more. She has that ability. They go to her and then sometimes they forget about her. So if they can get the ball to her and she can get points like that, that's great for Wake. Maya Cole's coming off a 14 point effort and a loss to Florida State on Thursday. A game Wake Force really played well for three plus quarters. It's been a play hang on. And that paint point production for North Carolina has been big so far. And got thing really got that point for them, doing a great job of just ducking in these last few possessions down the floor. So they have to play her, and that leaves her teammate open. 12 points in the paint for the Tar Heels of their 18. Cool. Turns, looks. Still waiting on that under five media timeout. A lot of up and down with those stoppages here. Andrews. Being defended well by Usby. North Carolina ball. Well, North Carolina got an 18 to six lead in due part to their post players getting it done. Ducking in great passes. Come on back.
Uh, the internet again. Oh, it's coming in really fast. Yeah, it's Verizon 5G. The network is crazy powerful. I bet you can't break that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I can. Wait, what? Beyonce breaks the internet, but can she break Verizon? Broken? Not even close. No. I'm running for Beyonce of the United States. Can you hear me now? No breaking. Y'all ready for Rocket B? Still works. Someone get me down. Hey, it's me, your skin. This acne has me craving a maximum strength cleanse, but will it cause more discomfort? New CeraVe Acne Cream Wash, developed with dermatologists, is powered with maximum strength 10% benzoyl peroxide to treat acne. CeraVe with three essential ceramides lets us cleanse without disrupting my natural barrier so we can treat our face and body acne and finally feel comfortable. New CeraVe Acne Cream Wash from the number one dermatologist recommended skincare brand. So this is your first time buying a home? Yeah, this is first time doing any of this. Everything is in the email I sent you the other day. The email? And if you haven't looked at it yet, let's go through it together. Okay. Expertise, okay. just one of the many ways an agent who's a realtor works for you. Here's one thing we can all agree on. Having more choices beats having less choices. That's why we make a range of Ford F-150 pickups for any job. Whether that job is getting heavy things where they need to go, powering things on the go, or going from zero to 60 in under four seconds. Tough this smart can only be called F-150. I love your dress. Oh, thanks. I splurged a little because Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance and I saved hundreds. That's great. I know, right? I've been telling everyone. Liberty. <gasps> Did you hear that? Ty just said her first word. Can you say mama? Liberty. Can you say auntie? Liberty. How many people did you tell? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Liberty. They're here. McDonald's best classic burgers ever. They're hotter. They're juicier. They're... Bravo, bravo. Looks like we've been hamburgled. Bravo, bravo. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice, in conjunction with its member institutions, have identified February 17th through 25th as ACC Unity Week. These two teams know one another well, a rivalry that dates back to 1974-75. So far, it has really been dominated by North Carolina as the Tar Heels off to a good start here in Winston-Salem. Yeah, must be fouled. The, the key here is that Carolina has 12 points in the paint, and I mentioned off camera when we were talking about, well, what can Wake do well? They did really well in the paint against, uh, against Florida State. They had 40 points in the paint, and so, you know, 10 of those 12 points have come from post players, so Wake's got to make that adjustment. Yeah. Amongst all of the things that USB does well, and there are many, first triple-double in program history earlier this season, she leads the team in four categories. Free throw shooting is not one of them. I'm averaging just over 60% from the line for the season. So out of the timeout here, North Carolina coming with a three-quarter court press. Into their zone defense, it's a matchup, sort of a one, two, two, a little morph a little bit depending on where the offense is. So he's got to be patient and penetrate and get a travel there on Williams. A few turnovers have caused some problems to the Demon Deacons on this end of the floor so far. That's their fourth. And the thing about Wake is they're not built to, you know, overcome all of those turnovers in a short period of time. They have to really work at it, so they need to value the basketball more. Kate Diebel, the redshirt freshman out of Brisbane, Australia, coming into the game, player who potentially could help do that, has had some really bright spots, 70 points against Virginia last Sunday. But as freshman will do, a bit up and down in terms of her consistent production this season. What was my phrase earlier today? The freshman giveth and they <laughs> take it away. I got a good chuckle out of Coach Chevy. <laughs> but she's really high on her. She's done a really good job, she thinks, in terms of growing as a leader and, you know, running the offense. She's still, she's still learning how to run an offense and to run a team, but she's definitely improved throughout the season. This is Diebel with the basketball being guarded by India Navarre, sophomore for the Tar Heels, 
transferred in from Stanford. Shot high off the glass into the hands of Kelly. She and Espy on the way, oh, leading the pass. break. That's how it's done. Seven points in the game for Usby, a 14-point lead for North Carolina. Wake Forest wants a timeout. We'll take one with them. All North Carolina so far. We want it all. We want beards and lattes. Great. No. We want to be invited Great. and not attend. Great. We want to take the shortcut. <laughs> You lost. And not be in danger. Reverse. Sadly, we can't have it all. Except at Sport Clips, where we check in with the pros in men's hair and totally check out with pure, uninterrupted relaxation. Sport Clips. It's a game changer. We are getting late in the regular season, so get ready for some more great games coming your way. This is what's coming up next Sunday on ACCN. Number 16, Notre Dame taking on Boston College at noon, and then 12th ranked Virginia Tech hosting North Carolina at 5.30 Eastern, number six, NC State squaring off against Duke. So it's Tar Heel team. The year. It's coming down to the wire. Not from three, too strong from Andrews. North Carolina and Virginia Tech went to overtime earlier this month. That was part of that four-game losing streak for the Tar Heels. They lost two of those in overtime, another by single digits to NC State. And that will be senior day for Virginia Tech. So Liz Kitley, Kayla King, going to be sold out in Castle. Great environment for that one. Wake Forest fortunate on that. Coach Gab Jevia earlier in practice yesterday, her big thing was don't give North Carolina live turnovers to give them opportunities to score, get points off turnovers. Reagan Conley into the game. They could use some three-point production, not this time, though. Conley, the best three-point shooter on the team by percentage. It's about 37% on the season. Made the half-court shot at shoot around. So I always pay attention <laughs> to who gets that. Well, when I see it, then I try to remember for the game, just in case you get some good mojo going. You never know. Final few seconds of quarter number one, ticking away here at the Joel Kelly carries turnover. She was ready to go to the free throw line, so I thought she was fouled. She goes there a lot. Listen, there were two violations there, the carry and the hook on, yeah. the, on the turn. The official didn't see that. Uh, you get that Megan Jebbia saw it, though. It was right in front of her, and she's well aware of the tricks of the trade of Deja Kelly, who's so effective at getting to the rim. Diebel getting through everybody for two. Well, Wake got the ball back. That basket won't count. Put a smile on the face of the D. A lot of ranked opponents, nine of them for North Carolina on the season. Haven't had as many victories though, three and six against the top 25. Yeah, this is a time where you throw a bunch of numbers out in terms of resume game is that you execute today one game at a time and then you worry about those. So those things will take care of themselves. Those numbers will take care of themselves. Five on the shot clock for the Demon Deacons. Diebel trying to drive against Janarski. Gets it back, ignore the buzzer because Wake Forest did hit the rim, so the shot clock reset. And by the way, those nine ranked opponents for North Carolina tied for the second most in NCAA Division I, so that's a little bit of a welcome to the ACC. We got a lot of ranked teams in this league, five at the moment, but we've had more and nine projected by Charlie Cream into the NCAA tournament at the moment. There you see those numbers against ranked opponents for North Carolina. Well, and the, the, the thing that Coach Banghart likes is, you know, they, they didn't get blown out in any of those losses. They were tough games, but all the injuries and things that they had, they still managed to be very competitive, even in the losses. And more ranked opponents are coming. We told you about next Sunday at Virginia Tech, and let's not forget about a little visit from their friends in Raleigh. It's coming up That's just on a Thursday. Small rivalry. NC State coming to Carmichael. Wake Forest only getting one opportunity 
And I talked about live turnovers, but those missed shots turn into opportunities for North Carolina. Inside, Gianni Key and off the bench for the Tar Heels, the 6'4 redshirt sophomore on Cary, North Carolina. Drive and foul called on the floor. It's going to go against Navarre, her first. Good defense by North Carolina, nearly get it away, and then Navarre gets two fouls in a matter of about 10 seconds. Couldn't quite keep herself from falling into the Wake Forest player and committing that second infraction, and that will put her on the bench. Look at Wake Forest's lineup with Elise Williams on the bench. Who is the person that can get you points with these five on the floor? Harrison averages 9.4 on the season. Dish is off the cold. Maybe there's your answer. And I, I think they need to focus on Coles a little bit more than they do because she can be very productive there. The question is, you know, she's got to play at both ends, though. She's guarding a post. She's got to run the floor. And well, will she have the energy to score? Four points in the game for Coles. A speed, making her way to the basket. Traveled. Yeah, Kaya Harrison really good at getting, threading the needle, getting downhill, and they had to help, and they left, left Coles open. There's where she's really effective, but you've got to change sides of the floor and get the defense moving so that she can get downhill and make those passes. And you know, you get within a single digit deficit, all of a sudden that feels a lot more manageable. The Dima Deacons do it right there with the jump up the pole. Well, they have been wanting her to take that shot more. She obviously can hit it, but she's been very hesitant to take it. And Great opportunity here for Wake Forest. Getting a turnover. Only eight points down. North Carolina has this tendency to go into these scoring droughts. They give Wake Forest some credit with their, with their defense on that. Courtney Binghart admitted with as many new pieces as she had with this team this season, people getting healthy or people getting hurt and trying to put new people in different positions. They're still tinkering quite a bit. You'd like to just be working on being in rhythm at this point, but they're not quite there. Yeah, the, the term she used, what did you say earlier, the variable? Confounding the variable. confounding variables. <laughs> she mentioned, you know, and it's all about rhythm when you've got different people, you know, running the offense. They play different ways, and so they've struggled with that, trying to figure out, you're obviously going to have Kelly, you're obviously going to have Usby, but who is that third, fourth, and fifth player that's been tinkering with those three during this time period when they've had all those injuries. Now you, you see Kayla McPherson standing up right there, Renaya Kelly next to her on the bench, both injured at the moment. Certainly Tar Heels hoping to get Renaya Kelly back sooner rather than later, but both of those players have run the point, as has Paulina Paris. And then you add Layla Hall, Sierra Toomey, both of those players had injuries coming in from high school out for the season. And then Deja Kelly, that fourth player who's played the one, played the point guard, they all run a little different. <laughs> Kelly working off the screen. And Coach Debbie wanting a, a foul there, getting physical on that ball screen, something she says that they've you know, been doing a better job of guarding this year. And North Carolina, no points in the quarter after shooting a very good percentage, over 50% in the first quarter. They're 0 for 2 to start the second. Some pressure from Diebel. There is a foul, a push called against Diebel. I don't think the Wake Forest crowd liked that call. <laughs> well, remember, let's let's look first. Ball handling, you're allowed one touch. Uh, I, I, it looks like they were both going for the ball there. Yeah, that's. I should make clear. 
you're considered a ball handler if you have possession of the ball. And yeah, they were both going for it. So that's the player screen here for Dinarski. You're trying to get her some openings. Oh, Wake was ready for it. Takes it away. Williams back in the game for Wake Forest. Pulls up for three. That's one of those shots where if you make it, it's great. If not, it's probably not a shot you want, you want to have more patience. But she's the type of kid that she can get those shots in bunches and goes on her own little mini run sometimes. Debo fouling Deja Kelly, so that will put Deja on the free throw line. Deja gets there with the best of them in the country. Uses the free throw line to her advantage, is so aggressive going to the basket, just behind Angel Reese in terms of free throw attempts in the country. Did you just jinx her? I didn't say anything about percentage. I just said she got there a lot. Now she does make pretty good percentage. That's 72% on the season. This is the first year. Tarvel's 0 for 3 from the line. Well, she's 0 for 4. Got to the line. Over 10 times, six out of the last eight games. So a lot of her points come from there. And she shot 91% in the last four, last four games from the free throw line. You get a charge there on Harrison. That, that's a leader for you though, right? You're Deja Kelly, you missed a couple free throws. Things aren't going your way offensively. Create something with your defense. Yeah, doing a good job of moving your feet there. Wake outscoring North Carolina four to nothing in this quarter. Where has all the offense gone for the Tar Heels? They've just they've tried a lot of different people and it's it's been there's no rhythm. You know, it's very herky jerk. It comes down to the last minute, last second. Like you see here, Wake's done a great job of trying to make them score at the end of the shot clock, but Usby comes up with the layup there. Nine points in the game for Alyssa Usby, leading the way for North Carolina. Scruggs, ready and waiting, that lefty three, six it. And you don't see her do that much, but she has that ability. And she's playing in the post, so Poole's not gonna come out there on her. Just the sixth minute three of the season for Scruggs. But a big one in this game. Through second violation, another turnover on the Tar Heels. Just a great hustle by Wake Forest. Anytime Gotthain gets the ball in the post, they come with a, another post to double. Well, and that's what I was going to ask you. That's what seemed to be so effective for North Carolina in the first quarter was the post play. Have they just gone away from it? Or, or are you giving a lot of credit there to Wake Forest defensively in terms of taking that away? I'm, I'm going to give Wake Forest credit for that. They're doing a good job that. And then when the ball gets kicked out, they're still closing out really strong. Doing a good job with that. Kick to the corner. Offensive rebound. Those have been few and far between for Wake. And the Deeks take advantage. And that's why they put Alyssa Andrews in there playing at the four. She's naturally a three. Late whistle, Scruggs will be going to the free throw line. Demon Deacons fighting on their home floor against Tar Heels. We have breaking news right now, so we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Shut that, that, that. Mahomes. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Ooh. Oh, I'm watching. Might be now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me, watch me do this. Come on in to the Chuck Stop. Everything you need for a road trip to the Final Four. I'm impressed, Chuck. Gonna need these and these mud flaps. I can use these. I'm earning double miles with my Capital One Venture card, so it's on me. Well, what up with you and these subs? Man's gotta eat. You sure this is cool? Hey, little guy. Relax, this place is pet friendly. <laughs> What's funny? You know, two guys and a horse walking to a hotel. This is a pony.
Ford Truck Month. With amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks, make way for the event that only comes around once a year. Featuring the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. Get ready and get to Ford Truck Month. See your Ford dealer today for incredible offers on the new 2024 Ford F-150. Only during Ford Truck Month. There it is. The classic Big Mac with more special sauce in every bite. Bravo, bravo. And there it goes. These are our best burgers ever. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. At Metro, get a new iPhone 12 with 5G. Take amazing pictures and share instantly. You don't take yada yada in life like knockoff sneakers. Don't take yada yada from your wireless provider. Join Metro and get a new iPhone 12 with 5G for only $99.99 with no contracts, no activation fees, and nada yada yada. Only at Metro. That is must see TV. Give her the ball. Are you kidding me? And it's a tie game. He drifts it. I can't believe what I am witnessing. The streak wins. He's in for the win. Ah! It is almost here, right around the corner, the ACC tournament. Get to see all these teams in Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina on the women's side with nine ACC tournament titles, more than any other active member of the conference. Wednesday night, the men's hoops come your way on ACC Network. PJ Hall and Clemson take on Georgia Tech at the Camish Pavilion. Ends at 7 Eastern on Wednesday right here on ACCN. Scruggs one free throw down and Deeks inching a bit closer to a North Carolina team that led by as many as 14 in the first quarter, but have just two points in the second quarter. And just a, a really smart play. I, I figured they would isolate either Usby or Kelly come out at timeout. You see there, Usby doing a great job of you know, drawing the foul. Usby, there's a whistle. As the Tar Heels were trying to get set in their offense. And Deja Kelly picking up the foul on her first. Yeah, half her fault and half the fault of got there. You've got to be patient and wait for that screen to be set. Williams. It's two points in the game for Elise. She averages 12.8 in ACC play. Conley. Off the mark from three, and then two Tar Heels battling for the rebound. Give it back to Wake Forest. You understand the shake of the head, Courtney Banghart, the talent on this Tar Heel team when they get into these ruts like this, Helen, gotta find their way out of it. And it's, as a coach, it's to see the turn of the unlucky. You're trying to figure out which lineup will be the best lineup because people are so inconsistent. Again, it's the rhythm that they've struggled with because they don't have the same set of people playing together very often. Got a little fortunate to get that layup after Andrews stumbled trying to get to the inbounds pass. And we're trying to go with this five out because you don't have Coles in there. Someone's got to penetrate and get to the basket. Again, at the end of the shot clock. It's at two. Scruggs hit her first. Came into the game shooting five for 28 from three. But made Wake Forest's first three-pointer of this game. So I'm trying it again. And if you're, and see, in that situation, if you're North Carolina, you should have gone to got game because there's a mismatch with her and Alex Scruggs on her. Nine turnovers by the Tar Heels. This has been part of the problem for Wake Forest. They've done a good job at times getting stops, but they don't turn them into points. They don't turn them into points and they don't get the fast break ability. So again, just not fluid once they do get the basketball, whether it's on the break or at half court. 
you're happy that they're getting the turnovers, but you've got to turn those into points. Scrubs number one all time in appearances in Wake Forest women's basketball history. Battling in the post. God dang, not having any of that. Well, Scrubs is a kid I think plays really, really hard, but she is at such a disadvantage from height wise. Wake Forest is very. They don't have much post depth, so she's playing in there really not out of position the whole season. And so that's why they bring Alyssa Andrews in there to get a little bit more hype for Wake Forest, and you get Coles back in the game. Geeks 0 for their last five, now six. Stockton's calling for it, has Williams defending her. And for North Carolina, they don't explore that enough. They need to continue to look at her. Both hands high up in the air, but a good swat away from Coles. You see, they go to her when they have Coles on her. They should have gone to her earlier when they had the mismatch. last four games after this one on the road so the Demon Deacons trying to take advantage of their time here at home. Four on the shot clock for Usby who beats it. You see that's a left line. When they get to the end of the shot clock they're making most of their shot with Rick Forrest. Theirs are all contested. The lead back up to 12 for North Carolina. Which, when you think about it, considering how Wake Forest has played, it's it's only 12 points. It could be a lot farther behind. Foul on the Deeks, who are shooting just 24% for the game. Williams whistled for the foul. It's her second. Inside to Gokdang, who gets it to go. They've been looking for that physicality from her for a while. She has that ability. One of the reasons she came over, they were happy to get her from Boston College was that physicality. Hadn't seen much of it this year, but you saw it there and the block shot. Even though they're gonna, I think, call a foul here, but her presence there in the middle is really what they were looking for. North Carolina on an eight to nothing run. Open up this lead, but Gothang does indeed commit the foul. Her second, putting Kaya Harrison on the free throw line. Best free throw shooter for the Demon Deacons. He's already made two free throws on the night. points coming from the charity stripe. I have not seen Deja Kelly or Donarski score much, which means North Carolina is trying to take advantage of the fact that they have depth in the post, and that's when they're that's where they've been going for their offense. Tiani Key called for the travel. Harrison. Had some success driving the last time. Got herself a couple of free throws. Coles being defended by Gotang, and Coles finishes it off. She has eight. A nice counter move. They need to continue to go inside to her. Foul against Riley Turkoff, it looks like, as Deja Kelly was trying to break free. And both teams in the bonus at the moment, so free throws will be coming for Deja Kelly. That is her fifth foul that she's drawn here in the game. And there's the first one to go after Kelly started over two from the line. Reminder that Thursday night at 10 Eastern after our women's basketball doubleheader, you can catch the nothing but net crew who will break down the day in the ACC. They'll
detail of highlights, analysis of all the games, plus look ahead to what's coming up next. It's coverage you can only get right here in ACC Network and the ESPN app. The ladies. Ladies night. It's the best. This crew does a great job. And a little fun along the way, too, which I appreciate. And in fact, one of those familiar faces and one Tar Heel fans know well, Ivory Latta standing by at halftime here to help take you through along with Justin Walters. Road teams have been very successful in the ACC today. That's one trend we've noticed. And that includes Georgia Tech very nearly going into Reynolds Coliseum and knocking off NC State. They pushed the Wolfpack into overtime. And that was an exciting game. They almost had it, just had a shot at the end. Conley for three. And NC State, in fact, so far, the only home team to have won today. All right. Under 14 seconds in this one, 11 point North Carolina lead. Tarnell shooting 61%. Espy not looking to shoot, looking for Kelly as the final seconds count down. And 11 points will remain the deficit for Wake Forest. North Carolina 12 to 11 in the second quarter. I thought they played pretty well, but again, just they need to take advantage of the opportunities they create for themselves. Wake Forest looking for their first ACC win of the season. North Carolina looking to make it two in a row, try to finish out the season strong with some big hitters coming. NC State coming at home in their next game, and then they travel to Virginia Tech after that. Six on the shot clock for Scruggs. Anya Poole defending. And then just trying to get out of the way of Alyssa Usby. You see Usby today playing the three position for North Carolina. So a little bit on the perimeter, a little bit more than normal. You like her there or you like her more inside? I, I like her on the perimeter. I mean, she's got the skill set and she drives to the baskets, which is going to be most effective. And she's also a really good passer. That doesn't work out that possession, but that is one thing Courtney Banghart told us they've been working on, making Alyssa Usby more of a facilitator in their half-court offense to try to help keep the ball moving. And here's one young lady that needs to get going, Elise Williams. Very few shot attempts in that first half. And the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, is two points. She averages 11.4 on the season. And, and you don't see Wake Forest making North Carolina move on defense. And so there really are no mistakes to take advantage of because they're not moving the basketball on perimeter. Crowd counting it down. Shot blocked by Poole. Donarski has Gokde running the lane. Gokde again calling for it. Trying to post up on Poles. Kelly. Left it short. Offensive rebound by Gangteng, who is fouled. The well, Wake Forest is one and done, but you see North Carolina, they have second chance opportunities. Second foul on Scruggs is at 5'10. She's trying to defend the 6'3 Gangteng. Reagan Conley now called for the foul. That's her second. She's someone else Wake could really use to get going, give them more of a perimeter presence. Well, I heard something. I thought it was a slap on the wrist. Let's give the benefit of the doubt to the officials and say it was a slap on the ball. <laughs> could hear that. Let's see here. Nice high-low pass. Isn't the arm part of the ball? <laughs> Maybe that time it was. <laughs> So North Carolina still getting another opportunity. No more travel, turns it over to Wake. Yeah, but you see that they're making a concerted effort every time to get the ball inside and to work from there inside out. North Carolina sitting in eighth in the ACC standings, but it is a very tightly bunched group with those eight ACC wins. Could move to nine with a victory on the road here at Wake today. Williams, oh, 
a double dribble on the play. You saw it too? Yeah, yeah. You see, they're trying to get Elise Williams some opportunities to score, but North Carolina doing a good job of playing those, those ball screens. Notre Dame, Duke, and North Carolina all with eight wins apiece. Notre Dame and Duke will be playing each other tomorrow night in Durham. Syracuse 12 and 3. People are surprised, but I'm not surprised at all with Coach Jack. And you've got the Asia fan. And you see Usby there scoring. That's where she's best, is in that painted area, whether she's a passer, a facilitator, or a scorer. You mentioned Syracuse, though. I feel like on a national stage, maybe Orange not quite getting what they deserve. Because you kept thinking, all right, so maybe their non-conference portion of the schedule wasn't quite as tough. That's why their net hasn't been as high. And they come into ACC play and they get off to a good start. Well, they have stayed hot. Those are your seeds at the moment. And Charlie Cream is projecting Syracuse a five seed. But if they stay in the top four, you've got to think they potentially start getting into the conversation to host. Yeah, I think people still don't believe. You know, they think that they only have the Asia Fairs. You see a foul there, but they've got a lot of other players that have been really contributing, especially their freshman pros. I can't remember her name right now, but uh, Lanham, I think, just did, doing a really good job of, of growing throughout the season. And, you know, I think they kind of like having that chip on their shoulder where people don't think that they can win. Latham, excuse me, I said her name wrong, Latham. Yeah, Latham and Joseph Woolley also been playing really well for Syracuse. Meanwhile, I would have to think, as North Carolina forges on and knows they still have everything out in front of them, if they finish strong here in the regular part of the regular season, they've got to pick things up at the free throw line. A good finish on this end. Four points in the game for Williams. And that's where Wake can get most of their points if they can play good defense and get out on the break where they don't necessarily have to spend a whole lot of time running half-court offense. They have better opportunities. Everybody looking at the officials after Scruggs hit the deck. There was no foul called on that contact. It was just... Well, let me get caught up with, yeah, it's just North Carolina ball into the basket. It did look like she ducked her shoulder. But, well, she was not outside the circle. And you can see that the pass afterward. There are a lot of North Carolina fans in this building. They, they sent a bus of them over. And those in that very familiar shade of blue making themselves heard, not liking the way Things have been called here these last couple of minutes. Foul on Harrison on the last play. Kelly, quiet so far for North Carolina. Kisses it off the glass. Uh, she'll be quiet and then all of a sudden she'll have her own little mini run so you never count her out. Especially with the clock running down. Eight points in the game for Kelly. Averages 17 to lead the Tar Heels. And now she picks up the foul on this end of the floor, her second. Diebel, redshirt freshman from Australia. North Carolina back in this zone has been really good for them. Wake Forest hasn't, they have not been able to penetrate. Williams hits a friendly roll. Both teams, Helen, in this game have had some issues getting those screens set properly. Yeah, there was a roll there before the actual screen, and that's actually happened a couple of times to Kai Harrison. She's happy that it's called, but her teammates have got to call out that screen so she doesn't, she doesn't get crushed by them. Poole picking up the foul, her first. Nice hard cut by Harrison as she gets chucked by Aspie. Sensing it is being called tight, Harrison. She's a graduate student. 
is in her fifth year at Wake Forest. Remember, got the extra year due to the COVID year. Of course, it's her second year with Coach Jebbia. North Carolina back to a smaller lineup here. Williams open for three, knocks it down. You said she needed to get going. She's got seven in the quarter, nine in the game. And once again, the lead down to single digits for North Carolina. Tar Heels turn it over. Williams has had the hot hand as the Dukes have made the last three shots. A bowling ball pass into the paint goes out of bounds. Now, good intentions by Williams there, trying to get the basketball to Alexandria Scruggs. Wake Forest doing something on defense. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. <laughs> Even easier than this. I'll take Barkley. Yes, I still got it. I told you she picked me first. Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? This is Ford Truck Month. With amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks, make way for the event that only comes around once a year. Featuring the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. Get ready and get to Ford Truck Month. See your Ford dealer today for incredible offers on the new 2024 Ford F-150, only during Ford Truck Month. My sixth grade English class wrote some letters to our local Chick-fil-A that had closed for remodeling. Dear Chick-fil-A. Dear Chick-fil-A. Dear Chick-fil-A. I used to get Chick-fil-A 100 times a week. We need it back. We cannot leave these letters unanswered. So we loaded up our food truck to surprise not just her class, but the entire school. It was really rewarding as a teacher to see that kindness return to the kids. We got you a little something to make sure your students keep writing. Businesses go further with 5G solutions. That's why they choose T-Mobile for Business. PGA of America and T-Mobile are partnering on 5G-powered analytics to help improve player performance. T-Mobile's network helps AAA stay connected nationwide to get their members back on the road. And Las Vegas Grand Prix chose T-Mobile to help fuel operations for one of the world's largest racing events. Now is the time to see what America's largest 5G network can do for your business. So with all these Hilton Honors points, I could stay for free. Mm hmm At the Waldorf Astoria in the Maldives? Yep. Hilton Honors, babe. Ooh. What about the canopy in Paris? Babe, Hilton Honors. How long has that been here? And there's no blackout dates. Hilton Honors, baby. <laughs> there's no way to Conrad to limbs included. When you want points that can take you anywhere. Hilton Honors, babe. It matters where you stay. Hilton for the stay. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified February 17th through 25th as ACC Unity Week. As a part of this initiative, members of the North Carolina Tar Heels and Wake Forest Demon Deacons join one another on the court to demonstrate their commitment to seeing each other as equals and treating each other with respect and dignity at all times. Recognizing that our differences don't divide us, but make us stronger. Yes, even with a Big Four rival. Remember back in the Big Four days of North Carolina basketball in this state. And Harrison drawing the foul on Deja Kelly. That's Kelly's third. I'm gonna give Harrison some credit. She has been all over Deja Kelly here in this third quarter, really frustrating her. And Harris, I mean, uh, Kelly that time very obvious with the little push off. She has a little nudge that she does normally when she goes in the shoe. It's not very perceptive by the officials, but that time very clear. Well, this is getting called really tight on both ends, which is if it's going to be called that way, it's exactly what you want. But right now, Wake Forest already, you can see in the bonus and North Carolina will be there on the next Wake Forest foul. Uh, so North Scruggs will go to the free throw line. North Carolina trying to Keep Wake Forest from cutting to the basket and chucking them a little too hard. Oh, and the banked 
free throw goes in. All right. The NFL Draft is just over two months away. Tomorrow night we'll have our draft introduction show highlighting the top ACC players at each position. Kelsey Riggs hosts, along with ESPN Draft analyst Field Yates, Jordan Reed, and Matt Miller. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern right here on ACCN. One course has outscored North Carolina 10 to 5 here in this third quarter. Seven points down, and North Carolina continuing to struggle taking care of the basketball. That's their fourth turnover in just over two minutes. So Wake Forest is going to be the bonus for the rest of the quarter. They should really try to take advantage of that and try to get to the basket, get to that free throw line. It's been some of the easiest points that they've scored this whole game. Diebel at the free throw line for Wake Forest. As a team on the season, Wake Forest shooting 73% from the line. Diebel at 71%. She misses the first, knocks down the second. And now we've got a two possession game. There have been moments in this season where this North Carolina team has looked so good, so dangerous and strong. And then there are other moments, like the ones you're watching right now, where they just cannot seem to get it figured out. And this is what Coach Debbie wants from Wake Forest, is to be aggressive, get turnovers, but turn them into points now. Williams runs herself into an open corner off on the three-point attempt. Usby calling for it inside. She's been the most consistent player for North Carolina this season. That's going to be a foul on Coles, her second, and Usby will be shooting. So Usby on the line mentioned her versatility, all that she does for this North Carolina team. 13 double-doubles on the season. And that gets her a pretty unique distinction, Helen. How about telling us about your all-sneaky good team in the ACC? Yeah, you look at these kids, and they're very, very important to their teams, but you don't hear a lot about them. Obviously, we talked about Oscar today, but I think these are kids that if they're not playing, that their, their teams struggle. And I wanted to give them some love. No, they, people don't talk about them enough. They talk about the stars and the names, but those key, kids are key, the glue to their team. You had Kayla King on there from Virginia Tech. I know Tech head coach Kenny Brooks calls her his security blanket. Big offensive rebound pulled down there by Scruggs. Wake Forest outscoring North Carolina 10 to 6 this quarter. Kelly goes down. And foul called as Williams decided it was Elise Williams time. Drives to the basket, forces the issue, and we'll have some free throws coming. Well, Coach Jebbia is making a concerted effort to try to get the ball in her hands so something can happen. And she's just reading what the defense does and getting to the basket. Again, the free throws are the easiest points that Wake Forest has gotten in the game today. Williams really starting to pick it up since halftime. Demon Deacons, 8 of 11 from the free throw line, now 9 of 12. And North Carolina on the other side is 3 for 10. That was really, really good help there on the drive by Coles. Well, North Carolina, no field goals for two and a half minutes. Six turnovers the last three minutes and 22 seconds. That about tells you the story of this quarter in particular for North Carolina and why Wake Forest, along with some good play by the Demon Deacons, has continued to fight their way back into this game. And North Carolina struggles to get some consistency in their offense and some rhythm. And they go through these offensive droughts where they don't score. Janarski, that could help. 
India Navarre in the game gets the offensive rebound. Gokdang, by the way, out there with three fouls for North Carolina. So we're going to try to run this horn set where you guys get the high low opportunity. They like to uh, isolate when they get in trouble. They like to isolate us either on the block or there you see at the high post and let her maneuver. Nothing sneaky about that. No. <laughs> we don't have to change her. She might have to be on another team. <laughs> she just does so much so well. And what a big bucket. We just talked about the frustrating stretch that North Carolina has been in. She has three fouls, too, by the way. But it's just vital to what this North Carolina team does. Yeah, vital to have her on the floor as well as Daisy Kelly. When, they, when those two don't get the minutes that they normally get average in terms of their average. North Carolina is seven and six, so. She definitely needs to stay out of foul trouble. 17 points in the game for us, B, on seven of eight shooting. Oh, Andrew I thought Andrew should have tried to explore scoring there instead of passing the ball out. She wasn't looking for it at all, was she? There you go, you get the ball. That's where she's really good at that mid range. You get the ball in the middle of that zone and operate from there. First field goal of the game for Harrison, all four of her points in the first half from the free throw line. SB on the drive. Navarre steps back for three. Harrison. Taking still too long to get into whatever action that they want to get into. And now they've got to take a contested shot. Williams gets a screen from Coles. Stepped out of bounds. I'm frustrated with herself, but she has been a big part of what Wake Forest has done in this quarter. Nine of the Duke's 13 points since halftime. Usby. When all else fails, go to Alyssa Usby. And when you isolate her in that area, that mid post to free throw line area, she is a mismatch for folks. She's going to drive the basket, loves to drive left, but really good at drawing fouls. We talk about Deja Kelly drawing fouls. Usby's really good at that too when she drives to the basket. And she puts Coles in some dangerous waters with three fouls now for Wake Forest. Usby made her last two from the line. Two for five. Now two for six. Like there may be a spot on the floor they're asking to get cleaned up. So we'll see if North Carolina comes back with that full court press to slow Wake Forest down after the free throw. And as much as Wake Forest has pushed in this quarter and, and really forced North Carolina into some frustrating stretches, Still the Tar Heels lead is eight. You want to keep it to single digits, but when you get to that fourth quarter, you've got to execute if you're Wake Forest. Nice back door. Yeah, that's a good look that Williams doesn't finish. In the fourth quarter, finishing off games the right way has been an issue. It was a problem for North Carolina in that four game losing streak. Where the Tar Heels were outscored 100 to 56 in the fourth quarter and overtime of those games. Five on the shot clock for Kelly, keeping it in her hands a long time. Now she passes it up, but it's out of bounds. Wake Forest ball. That was a great job by Debo, not letting Deja Kelly get to that elbow because that's where she wanted to go and, and do that. You know, that shot off the dribble, the last hard dribble, and she did not allow her to get to that spot. And the Tar Heels, with 18 turnovers, their most in a game this season. Still with a quarter to go. Not entirely 
sure what Courtney Banghart is arguing here. It looked like it went off of North Carolina. Either way, here comes Harrison. And shot wouldn't have counted anyway, so. They needed points, that's who they went to. They isolated her. Final quarter. This long standing rivalry between these two North Carolina schools. And you see here they're going to continue to do that. They get to travel there, I think, on SB. They have an extra step in the end. You do not, if you're Wake Forest, forget about Coles. I haven't really seen them try to get the ball in there. They've been focusing on trying to isolate Williams, which is fine, but you should not forget about her. Andrews back on the floor for Wake Forest. Diebel as well. So we didn't start this game, but start the fourth quarter. Six on the shot clock. Tough spot for Coles. Turns around, takes the shot, and this is everything. I don't think that, that's not a good quality shot. That wasn't what Wake Forest was looking for, I don't think. Tanarski has been very quiet today. Steal from Diebel. Defense to offense gets the easy two for the Deeks. Now that's the first fast break points that Wake Forest has gotten today. Yeah, just hustling there, and there's a Kelly not coming to the basketball. Once again, the deficit at six. That was as close as Wake Forest got it in the third quarter. Three from the corner. Not gonna cut it any closer with that shot. And then a foul after the play. If that's Coles, it's number four. Yeah, that was not a smart foul. They need her in the game. They're gonna have to take her out now and be really small with Scruggs at the post and Andrews at the post. So if you're in North Carolina, you want to go right into Gokdang. Coles will go to the bench with those four fouls. So a small Demon Deacon lineup gets even smaller. More points in the paint for Usby and the Tar Heels. Oh, good execution on the high-low there for North Carolina. And Alyssa Usby now three points away from her career high. She's got 20 on eight of nine shooting, five rebounds. Tough shot and an even tougher block from Navarre. That was a great drive, but it was a great response by Navarre. Yeah, nobody there at all. That was a good block. And Harrison has had some success being aggressive, looking to Turn the corner, drive with the right hand. Three players wind up on the floor. There is a foul. And I believe it's on Gokte. And that is her fourth. Shot from three off the front of the rim. Navarre behind the back, feeling a little extra juice after that shot clock on the other end. Pulls up for the jumper, left it short, came after her own rebound, nearly did get it, but it will go to Wake Forest. People in Harris, they've been playing really, really good defense on the ball handlers. They're playing really hard, making it difficult for North Carolina guards. But they've got to, they've got to score. I hear the people behind us saying, "Make it count." They are exactly right. <laughs> Conley has been quiet. No points in the game. He starts to heat up from outside, adds a whole nother dimension to what this team can do. Williams takes it, must be on the glass. Navarre lines it up. 
way off the mark. North Carolina still shooting over 50% for the game. Couple of air balls and somehow it still winds up in two points. Yeah, you can't teach 6-5. I mean, Scruggs was doing the best she could of you know, trying to box her out. No one on Wake Forest team is aggressive going to the basket when they get the ball. They're not even looking except for Elise Williams. You're on that perimeter, you've got to be aggressive. And Harrison may be the only other one, and she's not on the floor at the moment. Five on the shot clock. Williams lost the dribble, has to pick it back up, works off the screen, does hit the rim, gets her own rebound. That's unfortunate for Wake, they're working really hard on defense, but just not taking advantage of it on offense. Must be so good at seeing the floor, swings it over to Kelly. It's been a rather off night for Deja Kelly. Eight points on three for nine shooting. Deeks have missed their last six from the floor. After they again cut it to six, Scruggs, oh, what a shot! And that's all because Andrews was aggressive from the perimeter. She got the ball, she looked at the basket and penetrated. It created an opportunity right there for Alexander Scruggs because they had to come over to help. And that's the third foul on Navarre, puts Scruggs on the free throw line. She's three for four in the game. And if you're getting four from six on the free throw line from Scruggs, that's pretty good. She's a 49% free throw shooter on the season. Still plenty of time for Wake Forest as Usby. 22 now to lead North Carolina. It is a one-woman team on offense for North Carolina. If you are the Tar Heels right now, Helen, how much are you just looking for number one? Because she's been the best they've had all night long. Well, and they've done a good job of putting her in position to score. She's the only one for North Carolina in double figures. Scrubs nice turns move. the corner on Gokdang. And then it'll stay with Wake Forest. So the Demon Deacons trying to keep it close. They've got just under five minutes to go here at home. a 5G network so powerful it goes beyond the expected. And now T-Mobile 5G internet for homes and businesses is here. Also here, 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 even here. Whatever shape your home or business is, T-Mobile is bringing high-speed internet to towns across America. Only 15 minutes to set up and just 50 bucks a month with no exploding bills or annual contracts. True story. A trifecta of rivalry games can heat up the winner blues. This is going to be a fight all night long. First, number four, Houston faces number eight, Kansas. There's nowhere better than Allen Fieldhouse, nowhere. Then it's round one of Duke, Carolina. The best rivalry in college basketball. And number five, Tennessee takes on number 10, Kentucky. Boy, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Experience the blockbuster triple header today on ESPN. This time belongs to those who want it most. The rivals. The statement makers. 70 points. 70? You want that shot? Oh, he puts it in! Take it. That stop? What a block! Make it. This time is where youth is tested and greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. 
breaking news right now, so we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Shut that, that, that. Mahomes. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Ooh. Oh, I'm watching. You might be just. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me, watch me, do this. Let's take a look now at our Bojangles Big Bow moment of tonight's game. It's going to go to Alyssa Usby. Not just one moment, Helen, but all night long. Yeah, I said at the beginning of the broadcast, she's a versatile player, and she never gets tired. We haven't seen her run rim to rim as much, but just her half court, the way she moves, the pace with which she moves can tire out a defender, and she's the only player for North Carolina that is in uh, double figures. And you see nine for ten. She is a point off of her season and career high. Turnover, they're looking for Osby. It's out of bounds. Good recovery by Wake Forest, but it'll stay with North Carolina under the basket. By the way, that career high of 23 was first earned by Usby her freshman year against Wake Forest. North Carolina trying to finish this game strong, something the Tar Heels struggled with in that four-game losing streak. Usby on the floor, foul against Wake Forest. I like that play for North Carolina into Gacting, Gacting, and then a nice little curl by Usby off the screen from Deja Kelly. And that's four fouls on Scruggs. She's got four, as does Coles for Wake Forest. Both of them on the floor. Let's see if North Carolina goes after two coach players. Husky's calling for it, has Scruggs on her back. Kicks it out though. Kelly pulls up and Scruggs comes out and commits the foul. That'll be it for Alex Scruggs. She's gonna have to go to the bench for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's a tough one. Deja Kelly's gonna get to that spot no matter what. And uh, tried to block that, wasn't there. So on a team that has very little depth in the post, it just got even less as Scruggs heads to the bench. Want to give you a look at next Sunday's women's basketball games here on ACCN. 16th ranked Notre Dame taking on Boston College. Start your day at noon. Then number 12 Virginia Tech hosting this North Carolina team. That game is at 2 o'clock and game day is going to be in Blacksburg, by the way. And at 5.30 Eastern, number 6 NC State squaring off against Duke. First two for two trip to the free throw line tonight for Deja Kelly. They come at a good time. Helping the Tar Heels extend the lead to 11. If you wait for us, you can't take a whole bunch of time here. I know you need to execute and be deliberate, but you've got to try to get to the basket. Seven to shoot. Coles does the honors. And that did hit the top of the backboard. They'll say it's out of bounds. Tar Heel ball. Still single digits, anything can happen here. Kelly to Usby. Passes out of the double team. Off about 20 fingertips, <laughs> eventually to Navarre in the corner. Debo looking to run, Harrison. Crosses over a couple of times. Kelly holds her ground. Devil drives with the run. For her six points coming in this fourth quarter. Must be spins and in. A 
she's just in a groove. They cannot stop her. Operating from the perimeter to the basket off the screen. A new career high of 24 for Usby. She's only missed one shot all night. She also has eight rebounds, so a couple of boards away from what would be her 36th career double-double. Most importantly, trying to help North Carolina hang on on the road for a win. There's another rebound, so she's one away from the double-double. Looking for the assist up the floor to that game, who can't quite hang on. That's a reset. Maybe that's not such a bad thing for North Carolina. And again, the mismatch with Williams on us. What a week North Carolina has coming up with NC State and then Virginia Tech to the top teams in the conference. Kelly. Oh! Huge three from Daisy Kelly. Tar Hill certainly hoping they'll have double Kelly for their next couple of games. Get Renaya Kelly back healthy and on the floor, but this is Deja Kelly doing yeah, the work. Just a nice, you know, catch and shoot. Very aware of the shot clock. So Kelly now with 13 points in the game, two of three from three. They are gonna look back at that shot from Deja Kelly. Make sure her foot was completely behind the line. Yeah, sometimes you don't see Deja Kelly a lot, but she shows up at the exact time when she needs to for North Carolina. She will make big shots. So timeout on the floor as this one gets looked at. 14-point North Carolina lead. Trifecta of rivalry games can heat up the winner blues. This is going to be a fight all night long. First, number four, Houston faces number eight, Kansas. There's nowhere better than Allen Fieldhouse, nowhere. Then it's round one of Duke, Carolina. The best rivalry in college basketball. And number five, Tennessee takes on number 10, Kentucky. Boy, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Experience the blockbuster triple header today on ESPN. Don't make me get up out my seat. Broke the internet again. Oh, it's coming in really fast. Yeah, Verizon 5G, the network is crazy powerful. I bet you can't break that. <laughs> I bet I can. Wait, what? Beyonce breaks the internet, but can she break Verizon? Broken? Not even close. No. I'm running for Beyonce of the United States. Can you hear me now? No breaking. Y'all ready for Rocket B? Still works. Someone get me down. Seats at the hotel pool are a lot like seats in the game. We have VIPs and the bench. Well, who sits on the bench? Not me. And Doug. Customize and save with Liberty Biberty. Liberty Bushum. Liberty Bliberty. Mark that one. That was nice. I think you're supposed to stand over there. Oh, am I? Thank you. So a couple more, but we'll just we'll rip, we'll go quick. Libru Smibu. Libru Bribu. Limu Bibu. And me. Sinemu! Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Here's one thing we can all agree on. Having more choices beats having less choices. That's why we make a range of Ford F-150 pickups for any job. Whether that job is getting heavy things where they need to go, powering things on the go, or going from zero to 60 in under four seconds. Tough this smart can only be called F-150. Our classic burgers are hotter, juicier, and tastier than ever before. What? Hamburglar? <sighs> Our best burgers ever. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. We received a little clarification during the break. They were actually looking at who the ball went out off of. Called it Wake Forest. Confirmed that was correct. So Damon Deacons with 20 seconds to work with on the shot clock. Minute 34 in the game. 
Williams. Won't go. Coles hauls it in. Diebel for three. Yeah, got it. Diebel getting away for some really good minutes here today. On both ends of the floor, that's her second steal. Now that was an easy one, but she makes the most of it. Nine points in the fourth quarter for Diebel, and that's the deficit for the Demon Deacons. So having to play the foul game, still a foul to give for Wake Forest. I'm just doing a good job of picking the park at Denarski and then able to score. Coach Debbie is very high on her and her development here at Wake Forest. So that was team foul number four for the Deeks. Next one will put North Carolina on the line. And there it is from Harrison. North Carolina as a team, just a 68% free throw shooting team on the season. The number certainly you'd like to see higher if you're Courtney Banghart. And in the game today, just 47%, 7 of 15 from the line for the Tar Heels. And that's going to be crucial as you get into the postseason. Bar hits her first, her first point of the game. Wednesday night, have some men's hoops coming up on ACC Network. Clemson and Georgia Tech coming your way from Atlanta. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern. And I think they're going to look at this possession as well or see if there was a timeout. North Carolina thinking it would be their ball. You are allowed to look in the final two minutes of the game. That's what they did when we had the last break. The officials checking to see who the ball went out off of. Ruling on the floor is Wake Forest. Under two minutes out of bounds yeah, the review. The way the players reacted for North Carolina, they were pretty sure it was it was their ball. It was called Wake Forest ball originally. So let's say it is Wake Forest ball. Demon Deacons need to pick up some points in a hurry, something they really haven't been able to do most of the night. Here's the play. Looks like it's off of Coles. Does indeed. So we could see this pointing the direction Courtney Banghart was there, and that's in favor of North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they do have to give it back to Wake Forest. You, you've got to get it down as quickly as you can, try to get a good shot, try to get a second shot if that doesn't go in. I, I would assume that it would probably be at least Williams that would take that shot or at least draw enough defenders to kick it out to somebody. And but for North Carolina, off Coles. yeah. And so if North Carolina gets it, on the other hand, it's just taking care of the ball. Well, it's taking care of the ball and making sure that you get it to somebody who's a really good free throw shooter. I mean, if, if you're an assistant for Wake Forest, you're telling them who the worst free throw shooter on the floor is. And they're taking that thing out. And she's like 58% free throw shooter, so she's not somebody that they can foul. Well, Usby is one of the worst by percentage, but she's not one that they can take off the floor. So she's going to be there. Zanarski, probably the best option from the line. She's over 80% for the season. Kelly, about 70%. And Navarre, she's also right around 55%. Like well, you hope you have time to make that choice, but you don't always. You, right. have to, you, know, you do have to just foul, but you hope you have time to make that choice. Well, the good news, I guess, if you're Wake Forest, is there are an above average number of options who aren't that great statistically from the line for you to look for. Yeah, it is going to be North Carolina. The calls for the turn. turn North Carolina Originally ball. Ruling. Game clock set and from our replay, it seems like that is indeed the correct call. For sure, the whistle would blow and set better news for Wake Forest. It's a jump ball. They have possession. Well, now Coach Jeffy wants a timeout. Going to have the ball on her end. 
put Coles back on the floor as well. Eight points in the game for Malaya Coles, but all of those coming in the first half. I was just getting ready to say that. They just totally, they came out in the second half and they tried to get Elise Williams going and she did have a little mini run, but I think they just forgot about Coles because that it was working for her, you know, in that first half. I thought she did a decent job, but it, it's like they stopped looking for her in, in the post. Still plenty of timeouts left. North Carolina with four, Wake with two. Give you an idea of what is coming up. We've mentioned it a couple of times. For the Tar Heels, they've got six-rank NC State coming to their house on Thursday. Then they go on the road to Virginia Tech. We will have that one for you on ACCN College. Game day is going to be there on next Sunday at Boston College and finishing up at home against Duke. Virginia Tech, they have an awesome, awesome crowd and atmosphere there. So it's going to be a fun day when they have game day there. Ooh. The big shot by Williams. All right, a little life in the fourth quarter for the Demon Deacons. And a quick foul will put the Tar Heels on the free throw line. Yeah, he definitely had to go quick. and. Elise sometimes Williams, you are living right. <laughs> sometimes it's better to be lucky. <laughs> if you're Wake Forest, you, you do want to make sure you box out. You do not want North Carolina to get an offensive rebound. Kelly continues to struggle from the free throw line. Three for eight. And this is a both. So they're calling it North Carolina ball, but at least Williams thinks it's hers. So they should take a look at it. Thinks it's Wake Forest. This is the it did look. It looked like Utsby hit it out. But officials' yeah. discretion here if they want to look at this. Yeah. I mean, there's certainly both players had a hand on the basketball. It's worth a look. And <laughs> yeah, we're going North again. Carolina ball. Under two minutes out of bounds review. Yeah, it definitely looked like Utsby touched it last, but it has to be, you know, indisputable evidence to change the call. Right. And it was called North Carolina ball. But again, that's a case where that should have been Cole's ball. She should have boxed out a little bit better, so you don't even have to get to this point. Ooh, does Cole get it with Ooh. the fingertip? The length of a fingernail, maybe, on the end. Hard to see. That's a tough one. See the green ribbons that the Wake Forest coaching staff wearing for mental health awareness. I've seen a lot of signs around campus for that as well. Took a little drive around your alma mater earlier today. Did you? Did you show you, Maddie around? I did. My daughter is here, yep. So we went and looked around campus. Well, one thing I think you can say about this Wake Forest team, I mean, I know they're 0-13 in the ACC, but you know, you and I were talking about seeing growth and something to build upon. I mean, they just have continued to fight in this game, have never gone away, and it made life really difficult for North Carolina. Yeah, I asked Coach Jimmy about that. I'm like, how can you, you know, keep the energy of the team up and uh, you know, they've been able to, she says they've been able to stack some really good practices together, which has been good. The older players are starting to make sure that the young players understand, you know, what needs to be done. It hasn't shown up yet, but the effort has been there. It's just got to, they've just got to get the execution part. So it stays with North Carolina after the review. That was the original call. <laughs> Kelly calling for it. It's tapped away by Diebel. That's exactly what you want on the defensive end. Harrison looking for a foul, none called until the Deeks have to commit one. So they'll put North Carolina back on the free throw line and consider this statistic, Helen. North Carolina is shooting 50% from the floor for the game and 42% from the free throw line. Yeah, that's, that's wild. And that's, you know, it may not be an impact today, but down the line, that's going to be really, really important if they hit those free throw shots. As many times as they get to the line, I mean, today, Usby, she has drawn 10 fouls. 
And Deja Kelly has drawn eight, so they're getting to the line. They've got to, they've got to convert. Timeout was called. Now the timing here is important because you have to call that timeout immediately. And I think Megan Jebbia did get it called. That's what allows the Demon Deacons to advance the basketball. If you dribble or make a basketball move, you cannot advance the ball. So does it have to be a three here for Wake Forest, Helen, or, or what, what do they look to do? Well, you, you, I mean, you got to take the first best shot that you have. It, you would like for it to be a three, but you know, I would put Elise Williams in and Coles in some two-person action and then work off of that, but you can't use too much of the clock. Wake Forest, four of 15 from three for the game, but two for four in this fourth quarter. Williams banked one, and this time it's Coles. That's a good look. Debo commits the foul with as few seconds ticking off the clock as possible. It looked like Coach Jebbia was going to commit that <laughs> running on the sideline in there. Uh, she was trying to help her players out. Yeah, North Carolina keeps missing these free throws. I mean, it's there's still a chance for Wake Forest. Two possession game now with Navarre on the free throw line. A 55% free throw shooter on the season. One of two today, now one of three. Does the door stay open for Wake Forest? It does, but the rebound goal, but he boxes out the free throw shooter. And that, that's a tough one. You never want an offensive team to get a rebound on a free throw. All right, Helen, I know you've, you've gone through coaching many a year. What does a coach do at this point in the season if you're having this type of a dreadful free throw shooting performance? What do you do? Do you just shoot a ton of free throws? Do you just well, trust you your just, players to you, get it? You try and practice to put them in situations like one and one and, you know, you run through scenarios just to try to get them you know, get some reps in a situation where there's a little bit of pressure on them. And then there's also the school of coaches that's like, you know, we're just not going to talk about it. <laughs> so I, I don't know which Coach Banghart will choose to do, but they definitely need to shore up on that free throw line if they expect to have any success in the postseason. Well, sometimes you have to win ugly, and it looks like that is exactly what North Carolina will do. A great field goal percentage, over 50% for the game. And they do indeed hang on 58 to 50 to pick up the win.